Hey everybody, Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health, and it is January 6th today, 2010. Last week, we brought up some of the ideas in 180 Degree Diabetes, and we continued our conversation a little bit about cortisol, and cortisol being um, kind of a leading suspect in the development of uh, metabolic syndrome, and, and it certainly is that. And um, But as you know, for the ones that have read the ebook. That's not the only focus. It's not a cortisol book. There's a lot of other information in there. There's information about fructose. There's information about uh, the mineral chromium as well as other key essential nutrients. Um, thyroid hormones are taken into consideration. Uh, it's not just a simple book about cortisol and uh, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance. Surely, certainly is not a syndrome of cortisol and cortisol alone, although that is clearly one factor. Um, I didn't I didn't go into leptin, the hormone leptin, in the ebook. Um, I thought about doing it, but I wanted to. You know, it was it was getting complicated enough already, and the point of the ebook is is to be given to the layperson. You know, this is not something I'm trying to convince uh, Walter Willett at Harvard uh, of my theory. And, and I have to nitpick all the particulars, uh, just trying to get the main point across, the main theme, because you, you don't have to be uh, an endocrinology geek to uh, understand what you, what you might want to try when it comes to improving your, your glucose tolerance, decreasing your insulin resistance, and potentially overcoming a case of uh, metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, or diabetes. Um, but leptin is important, very important, and uh, it's one of those things that I believe was Jeffrey Friedman was one of the leading researchers in uh, doing leptin research. He's an obesity researcher, and he was noticing the differences between fat rats and skinny rats, and you know, typical uh, laboratory scientists studying obesity, and they were honing in on this this new hormone that had yet to be discovered and um, this wasn't wasn't really all that long ago I think this was in the last gosh 10 or 15 years but they're honing in on this this hormone and they're expecting and anticipating it to be the great answer and um, they go in and, and through these rats and they isolate everything and they get it down to the hormone which they call leptin uh, they administer this hormone leptin to, to the fat rats, and magically, mysteriously, the rat's obesity goes away. And instantly, you know, Friedman and, and his posse believe that they have found the great answer. And uh, excuse me if I'm, if it was a different researcher than Friedman, I haven't, uh, I'm not, I'm not the be all end all source of uh, leptin, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Friedman was a one, but. They, they thought they had found the answer, and all they had to do was go and give leptin to obese people, and uh, the whole obesity epidemic would be would be taken care of, eliminated. And uh, they were very, very excited about this. It showed a lot of promise. And they, uh, they got some trials with some real humans, and they injected them full of leptin, and it did nothing, <laughs> and, um, which is really, really interesting because it worked for the rats. It didn't work for the humans. Um, so why was that? Well, guess what? You know, we talk a lot about hormone resistance, and I talk about hormone resistance a lot in 180 degree diabetes uh, because it's an important concept where the, the receptor sites are not working properly and the hormone's action cannot take place even though it might be present uh, in the system. Its action is thwarted by the fact that the receptor sites do not work. There's cellular resistance to the hormone, and it just doesn't work. And that's that's what uh, rising blood sugars and type two diabetes and metabolic syndrome and and obesity. That's that's what it's all about. It's not about uh, lack of insulin. It's about insulin not working correctly. It's not about the pancreas which produces insulin. It's about the cells which are not operating correctly. And it's very mysterious. But there's a such thing as, uh, as leptin resistance as well. Now, an 180-degree health member passed along a, uh, a link 
about leptin and the ability of raising the leptin concentrations in the blood, its ability to overcome diabetes, overcome insulin resistance, lower blood sugars, etc. And it's thought now that it primarily does this by activating a certain gene. Leptin is tied to a certain gene and it activates this gene and once that gene is activated everything runs smoothly and diabetes uh, reverses itself and everybody's happy. Um, but we're, we have a situation where there's uh, leptin resistance. So you can raise leptin all you want, but if it's not getting through, it's not going to trigger this gene, it's not going to work. Um, so there's some complexity there. However, fructose could be that thing that induces leptin resistance. I'll read a little passage from Richard Johnson's The Sugar Fix. Okay, It says, halting the hunger control hormones leptin resistance. It says, high doses of fructose cause leptin resistance. This phenomenon was demonstrated in 2008 study led by two of my former colleagues at the University of Florida, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we fed laboratory rats a high fructose diet for six months. Next, we injected the rats with leptin. The hormone had little effect on the rats' appetite. They kept right on eating, indicating that they had become leptin resistant. Uh, leptin is a appetite suppressing hormone. And so fructose causes leptin resistance. Uh, leptin no longer functions. Fructose increases hunger, uh, increases fat storage, etc. And um, that's why fructose is, is the primary focus of 180 degree diabetes along with, um, along with the other, a few other key elements and factors. But uh, not only that, but fructose does not raise leptin. So it causes leptin resistance while also not causing leptin to rise. Um, Johnson points out this as well. Blood tests show that women's leptin levels were 35% lower when they drank fructose-sweetened beverages than when they drank glucose beverages. Um, again, that makes glucose a superior form of carbohydrate for, rising, uh, for raising uh, leptin levels. Now, uh, the last thing I'll piece together, and I'm going to do a blog post uh, probably Friday on this as well, which is going to be a really, really insightful one, I think. Um, uh, Russ Ferris, in his book, The Potbelly Syndrome, that I quote, uh, page 87 in 180 Degree Diabetes, I leave out part of that quote on leptin because we didn't discuss leptin. But in there, it's, it's an overfeeding study in which four of the five or five of the six subjects became less insulin resistant. At the end of the period, uh, this is the quote, and it, this study was only went for a few weeks. Um, at the end of this period, the subjects had gained an average of 9.7 pounds, and their leptin levels had risen 68%. So again, the high everything diet, its whole premise is basically can be traced to this leptin. Eliminate fructose, and you overcome uh, leptin resistance. Eat a high calorie diet matched with that. Focusing on glucose as your source of carbohydrates. And you raise leptin levels and sort of kill two birds with one stone. But anyways, I'm going to talk about this in a blog post later. And we'll uh, keep the conversation going next week. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.